Today we're going to make this simple menu screen. You can move between options, you can switch to a scene, and you can exit. We're going to make this from scratch. So, okay, first thing I like to do is go into my project settings, set my resolutions. So we'll go 320 by 180, and we'll set a test with height of times 3, and 2D key. Start with the margin container as a base node. So you can always add margin, call this main menu, and then start setting up the control hierarchy. Start with centered and then vertical elements and then center and a label for the title text. So this will be title text. And I don't like the default font, so I like this site, BitFontMaker2. I'll link it in the description. And I picked, uh, I think, Shikergo 2. All right, Shikergo 2. So let's go new font, dynamic font, dynamic font data, grab that font. And sometimes it doesn't appear at first, so I like to just toggle it the size. We'll give it 32 and some, some shadow. And then we'll get the VBox container for the options, the so center VBox, and we'll do a, another center and HBox, so horizontal elements, because we're gonna have a label that represents the option that's uh, like the current selected option and then the text. So this is going to be its own text and this is going to be text as well. So for this one, I will first save this dynamic font as Shikergo and then I will just apply it here onto this element, but I will make it unique because I want to make it size 16 and give it a shadow as well. Okay, and then I'll duplicate this. I'll call this selector. This one can be just option name. We'll call this start and then duplicate this. Call this one options and we'll call this one exit. Okay, now one of the problems is that they're not the same width. So we can grab the largest one, which is 49, and give the other elements a minimum X of 49. And I'll do the same for the selector because the way that we're gonna be toggling it to determine which one is shown or not is setting the text to empty. And that kind of moves the, the elements, which we don't want. So we'll take that minimum X of seven and apply it to all the selectors. So that way that when we set this to empty, it doesn't move the whole container. All right, let's give it a background, color rect, assign it a color, say that looks pretty good, and a script, we'll do empty. Okay, so First thing we'll do is set up the function that determines where the current selection is at. So we'll have a current selection, we'll start at zero, and then we'll grab a reference to the three uh, selector texts. So on ready var selector one, we'll copy the path, selector two, copy the path, and Selector three, copy the path. And I'm just gonna create a function that sets the current selection. And we'll pass a parameter to that. So we'll start by setting all the texts to empty and then only setting the one that we want to be the selected one. So if the current selection is zero, then we'll set it to greater than, and we'll do the same for the others. 
So selector two, selector three. And then in on ready, we'll set the initial one to be zero. And we'll save this scene. So now when we load it, you can see that the, only the first one shows that it's selected. Next, we'll wanna listen for input going up or down the selections. So we'll look at the input map and notice that we have UI left, UI right, UI up, UI down, and UI accept to work with. So let's listen for those inputs. So we'll start by checking for is action just pressed UI down. So if we're going down, our selection, selection is gonna go from zero to one. So that's incrementing it. So we'll increment our selection by one and set the current selection. So let's test that out. Oh, disappeared. Um, oh, that's why all of these are zero. Okay, there we go. But if we're at the last one and we hit down, it disappears. So we don't want to be able to go down if we're on input two. So we'll just add an if statement, current selection is less than two. And we'll pretty much be doing the same thing for UI up. So only if it's greater than zero and we'll decrement. So up, down, up, down, up, oh, going up didn't work. UI underscore up. Okay. Cool, next we'll um, implement the acceptance, the enter the space bar to accept, to select an input. Um, but first I'll just add some space here. Looks better. Okay. Um, let's create a sample scene to switch to. So just a simple, let's just give it color rect and I don't know center container and a label that just says first scene, make this, make it purple. And we'll give this the same font, first scene, cool. First scene, save, save. Okay, let's get a reference to this. Uh, constant first scene equals preload first scene and now we'll check for UI accept so if we accept then we want to handle the selection and we'll create the function for that now handle selection so if current selection is zero, which is start, then we'll switch scenes. We'll switch scenes by getting the parent, which would be the root node and adding the child first scene instance, and then we'll get rid of this scene. Let's test that out. So press enter and first scene. Okay, and we'll just check for the options one and I'll just print options. And the last one will be the exit, which is just get the tree dot quit. Yep. So we hit options, add options. So options would appear, whatever. Start, first scene, and exit, exits. 